A couple years ago, I saw a quote posted online. Dear little black girl with the big name, correct them every single time. It didn't have an author and it didn't necessarily need one as it was something my older sister and I had heard all of our lives from our mom, a very admirable woman who at one point was also a little black girl with a big name. I have heard countless mispronunciations of my name and you would think as I've grown older that I've heard every variation that there could possibly be. But unfortunately for us both, you're wrong. And as much as I admire freedom of expression and creativity, y'all, my name is not the place to do so. As you can see, my name is seven letters long and it has four syllables and it's pronounced, are you ready? Alondia, Alondia, Alondia. And with that, I present to you my top three favorite mispronunciations of my name. Coming in at number one, we have Alejandra, very unique. At number two, we have Alondriana. Now, how'd those extra letters get in there? And last but not least, at number three, we have Alondo. Where did we get an O? But it's funny after the fact, but in the moment that I'm hearing these attempts at my name spoken directly at me, might I add, I feel confused. I feel offended. And above all those feelings and all seriousness, I feel othered. Being othered is when a difference is zeroed in on, and that difference is used to destroy any sense of familiarity or connectedness between groups of people. It prevents genuine dialogue and empathy from being exchanged. Being othered because of my name has profoundly impacted how I interact with others. Empathy inevitably develops within those of us with unique names. And one of my favorite words, and yes, I have a favorite word, is intentional. And that's how I approach these interactions with strangers. So when someone introduces themselves to me for the first time, I always make sure that I say their name back to them. Not only does this help me remember their name, but it shows them that I am present within our conversation and that I have some type of reverence for them. So when I introduce myself to people for the first time and they don't say my name back to me or give me some type of nonverbal acknowledgement that they heard me, I know right then and there that they're not gonna remember my name. And if somehow they manage to, they're not gonna say it right. Mispronouncing someone's name holds so, so, so much power over their feelings. But if I may let you in on a little secret, so does saying it right. There's a book that my childhood friends and I loved so, so much growing up. It's about a mouse named Chrysanthemum. She's a little mouse with a big name, starting school for the first time. And my friends and I knew at the ages of five and six that our names, Shania, Kamaya, Kalise, Tayana, and Alondia, that our names made us different. And just like that mouse, we cherish our names, even though others made us feel as if our names were way too complicated and way, way, way too big for little black girls. I bring up Chrysanthemum to say that while the visual representation in the media for African Americans is good, it's lacking another layer, the elements of African American names. Visually, me and that mouse do not look alike, or at least I don't see it. Y'all don't see it, do you? <laughs> okay. But name-wise, Chrysanthemum and I are one and the same, and she represents so many others just the same way. The power of media to shape our perceptions in all of its forms cannot be underestimated. Media has the ability to shape how we perceive others and ourselves. Accurate representation in the media has the potential 
to break down barriers, broaden our perspectives, create powerful new role models, and even ignite inspiration within us. The characters that we see on television should not only look like us, but they should also share the history of our names. Take, for instance, Taylor and Chad from Disney's High School Musical movie franchise. They're an excellent representation of African-American teenagers on screen, but their names were an act exactly a typical black name, as the actors portraying Taylor and Chad were named Corbin Blue and Monique Coleman in real life. The visual aspect of representation is just as important as the linguistic and cultural element of names that shape a community. This furthers our understanding and appreciation of other diverse cultures and can even inspire those of us with unique identities to embrace them. And Nicole Hannah Jones's 1619 project, presented originally as a series of essays within the New York Times in 2019, she states, black names are a form of resistance. It is why the insistence of so many black Americans to give our children names that we create is an act of self-determination. So it is only the truth to say that African-American names are uniquely American. The Declaration of Independence talks about the same act of self-determination by stating, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That was published in 1776, a time when African Americans were enslaved and wouldn't be granted the right of citizenship until 92 years later in 1868. And it must be noted that the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in 1865. So African Americans were in this distinct limbo period for three years where they weren't protected by the Constitution or its Bill of Rights. And African Americans during that three year contentious period of waiting for the unknown, they believed in that constitution. They believed that they would be seen as human beings in a country that they had sustained economically for over two centuries at that point. They believed that they would be able to secure a future and be happy. And freedom of naming summarized all of those things. It plays an important role in African American history, as these names instilled them with pride in a society where they were often treated so poorly. African American names, how unique they were, they loved them because enslavers named them, and they had such a connection with those names. And because of this, Having a standout name allowed them to separate themselves, as the legacy of slavery still exists within the last names of the descendants of the enslaved. Having a first name that was different allowed them and instilled in them pride because this pride allowed them to take back their dignity. This dignity was essential because that is the truest example of self-determination freedom of governance, to have control, building upon the foundation of self-resilience and self-determination. You see these names passed down from generation to generation, and I see it within my own family, as my great-grandmother, Annie Blanche, was named after the eight other Annies that preceded her, and my grandmother, Jeanette, named after a great aunt born in the 1850s. That name was Janetta. These names show the strength, endurance, and perseverance through generations, and they should be recognized. And there hasn't been much written on research-wise on how African Americans choose their names. And most in the media, what we see is how humorous these names sound or that they're ghetto. But I found an article from 1996 it was in a journal of Austinomatics, and it was titled Afro-American Traditional Naming Practices. 
And it states, personal naming is not political. For most of the black community, it is a cultural statement. It's an affirmation. It imbues its bearer with a sense of uniqueness, a sense of specialness. And that is a positive thing. And speaking of positive, meaningful, and unique names, let's talk about some black celebrities whose names are well known, but were once considered difficult to pronounce, that we now rattle off with ease. Who would have thought that a name like Beyonce, one of the world's greatest entertainers, or how about Denzel, a groundbreaking movie star? Or what about Zendaya, an acclaimed actress? It just goes to show that these names are now easily to be pronounced as John, Jane, or Jessica. These names show that a little bit of exposure goes a long way in breaking down those barriers and making the world a more inclusive and diverse place. But, y'all, these names, they're not that hard to say. And since they're not that hard to say, what about black people who exist every day with unique and unfamiliar names? Like my sister, my Kia, or my mom, Lakia, or myself, Alondia? That doesn't make our names any less important. I think it just gives us all another reason to want to say these names correctly. Everyone must take an active part in learning how to say black names right. Because it honors that same history of self-determination, of strength, of endurance, of perseverance. And it shows those little black girls and mouse with big names that you care. That is power. Thank you.